Hey guys, how's your coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends? Welcome to the video, guys. Another champion guy this time on Kyoku. Uh, before we start really quickly here, I hate talking about myself, uh, but as I mentioned, I think on the Silar, a Silar guide or the Goffrey guide, we actually just got enabled on the channel to have super thanks. This is more of a passion project, guys. It's not something that I obviously do for the money. We don't really make any money on this channel, uh, but we do have the thanks, the super thanks. So uh, if you do leave a uh, any sort of a tip or whatever on these videos i'll definitely give you a shout out at the beginning of every single video i really appreciate you guys obviously zero obligation to, to donate but it's enabled i might as well shout it out from time to time uh kyoku today is going to be the topic of the video in man oh man oh man uh she's a beast she's arguably the best protector in the game there's a mythical who might do it a little bit better a recent addition to the game but for a long time for a couple years she's been the best ally protect champion arguably again the game there's some other good options like a or Suga or a Tyrant. Uh, there, there's a few out there, even a Verse of the Grim. But Kyoku is really special. And we'll talk about why in today's video. First, a few shout outs. Uh, Mujtaba, it's your lucky day, man. It's your lucky day because he's been asking for a Kyoku guide almost every day for a long, 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 long time. Uh, shout out to Get Shredded. Shout out to It's Dozer, Tate Allen. Uh, to Mushtaba, 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 Black Death. Uh, and well, the, the shoutouts go on and on. A very, very uh, much requested champion here on the channel. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at her and see what all the buzz is about. All right, guys, so Kyoku is a Shadowkin legendary spirit affinity defense based champion. Uh, she looks pretty cool. She's got one eye. Uh, if you want to hear the backstory, she got this Shadowkin vibe, definitely. But it's a little bit of a darker aesthetic on her, right? She looks she she looks really cool. Uh, if you want to see the backstory on her, she does have a full lore write up. I heard her lore is pretty good. I might have read it in the past, but I I actually forgot. Uh, but I heard it's a pretty good backstory, so that's available to you guys in game if you're interested. Uh, anyway, the, I love her shield, man. I don't know what any of this means. It probably means nothing, but it's it's really cool. Is that like an owl or what the heck is that? Anyway, I love it. Uh, so on her A1, One-Eyed Beast attacks one enemy. And by the way, defense base, as I said, she has average HP, average speed, maybe slightly below. Her defense is really good. Anything above 1,400 on defense base champion or anybody for that matter is very, very good. Anything about 1,500 is, is S tier in terms of base defense. So we're happy with that number. On One-Eyed Beast attacks one enemy. Will place three hits if the target is under three or more debuffs. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing the big version of Weaken for two turns. If you're going to be using her for Clan Boss specifically, right? Clan Boss, she's a beast because she's always going to be under three or more debuffs. She's going to bring the big version of Weaken for you. And in that case, I would also pick up Giant Slayer as my tier six mastery option for her on the offense tree. Uh, we're not going to build her that way today, but more on that when we get to the masteries. Blood Curdler A2 is a four turn cooldown with an AoE decrease attack for two turns. After attacking, has a 100% chance of placing a burn for two turns on enemies that did not place a decrease attack debuff on. Awkward A2, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Definitely not the highlight of her kit, but the decrease attack is extremely valuable. Again, in clan boss or really anywhere else for that matter. Uh, it's a four turn cooldown, which is not ideal, but that is mitigated by the A3 where we get an extra turn, thereby over the course of a longer battle, decreasing the cooldown of that A2 as well. Kyoku's Horde is the highlight of her kit. It's a four turn cooldown, and it's an ally protect on all allies except this champion for two turns. Block damage on this champion for three turns. Now she's immediately gonna take that extra turn, which is gonna strip away one of the turns of the block damage, which is why it's beautiful that it's on a, two, a three turn, not two turn, right? So what we're looking at at the end of the day is a four turn cooldown when booked, the extra turn immediately brings it down essentially to a three turn cooldown so we can get back to it faster than one would imagine. And then she's blocked damage for two turns while she's taking all that extra damage from everybody else for two turns on the ally protect. For new players out there, ally protect is, well, exactly what it sounds like it would be. She is soaking up. 50% of the damage from all the allies. It's the best damage mitigator out there in terms of raw damage impact. Uh, so she's got it all and she's not going to be taking any damage unless somebody strips the block damage buff from her. 
On the passive Wellspring, it's a four-turn cooldown when booked. Every, th every time this champion's hit with a critical hit, it heals all allies by 15% of their max HP, and then it places the big version of increased defense on all allies for two turns. So it's like a beefed-up version, a buffed-up version of Seeker's passive, right? Big version decreased defense on everybody with a heal. She needs to be hit with a critical hit, which is great for the arena on a go-second team. Very tough to, to mitigate a Kyoku on the other team, uh, provided you don't have a buff stripper, right? So, really good ability, right? And it's good outside of the arena as well. It just procs a lot left uh, a lot less often, excuse me, because uh, bosses usually in this game have a 15% crit rate. But, you know, when they do land that crit, you'd love to have, to have an ability like this. So, uh, I really like it. Really nice passive to add on to an already really robust kit. She has defense in all battles by 30% on her aura, which is a great defensive-based aura for everywhere, obviously, inside the game. Uh, I'm going to show you how I have her built here, guys. I have a pretty traditional build. Now, she can solo, believe it or not, she can solo Bommel 90 hard. I thought about building her to do that. And then I saw the stat, uh, uh, what you need in terms of stats. And man, oh man, oh man. I don't think, I mean, I don't know. You tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. But I don't think there's enough players watching who could even build it. You need like a 360 speed with 55k HP in regen and immortal gear. That's a lot. It's a high barrier even for endgame players because, I mean, who has that much good speed and mortal gear to get her that fast? But maybe some of you do. Uh, either way, I actually found those exact stats right on hellhades.com. So massive shout out to hellhades.com. Let's take a look at it really quick here. Kaioku can, can solo bomble hard 90 with the correct stats in a regen set along with Immortal running at a true speed of 358 with minimum 55k HP. Uh... Okay, they give her an overall grade of 4.5. And look at all these areas in terms of her versatility. Frost Spider, uh, I'm going to name everything really quick. Just rattle them off. Everywhere she scores over a 4. Frost Spider, Eternal Dragon, Dark Fae, Dreadhorn, Celestial Griffin. She's a Doom Tower monster. Magma Dragon, uh, Iron Twins, Doom Tower Waves, Hydra, Clan Boss, Spider, Fire Knight, Dragon, Ice Golem. You name it, man. Wow, that's a lot of versatility. In the arena, they give her a four as well. I pretty much agree to that. Uh, let me see, like gold one. She's not being used much in endgame arena, meaning like plat and meaning in uh, gold of live arena. That being said, she can still be a nice kind of curveball. She's actually not used at all in gold three and four, but it's a nice kind of curveball to your opponent sometimes. She's not bad, you know? Just got to be careful of buff strippers out there again. Anyway, let's go ahead and see how I have her built here. Uh, of course, we have her in regeneration and perception. Now, we do need a lot of survivability, and we do need some accuracy, too, for the decrease uh, uh, attack and for the weaken. So for that reason, I love throwing her in a regen and a perception. Regen's so good. I mean, we get the heal uh, by 15% every turn. Even better than that, though. Of, or not better, but equally as good for different reasons. You could throw her in a bolster set as well. If you're going to go immortal regen or bolster, always try to prioritize uh, the HP, even though she's a defense-based champion. So we did that in today's video. Uh, we went HP percentage on the gauntlets. We went HP percentage on the chest. That's going to give her, uh, obviously, a lot more heals every return right uh, another option by the way is guardian if you want to make her like an uber 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 tank guardian set is definitely the way to go just be careful because she's soaking up so much damage if you're putting her in guardian on top of everything else but of course the saving grace is she has blocked damage so what are we really worried about right uh i wonder if i should you know what I'm talking myself into Guardian right now, but we already have her built in regen. We're going to stick with it. But I think that my favorite might be Guardian gear. Uh, okay, I move on here to speed on the boots. Speed is going to be a priority. We want her to go uh, decently fast. I went HP on the banner. I went HP on the amulet. And I went HP on the ring. So even with all this HP percentage and all this HP on the accessories, we still have her at 3,700 on the defense. But we have her at 92K on the HP. Again, 
again, I would definitely go defense percentage on the gauntlets or defense percentage on the chest, one of the two or in some of the accessories if I didn't have her, you know, in, in regen, right? Uh, if I had her in perception, you can, there's so many different ways to build Kyoku. I've seen people run her in resist or righteous gear, right? I've seen people run her in protection gear as well. So there's a lot of different options. Uh, let's just see really quickly on uh, hellhades.com. By the way, her AoE is a 3.3 multiplier. That's not bad. It's a little bit higher than Valkyrie's AoE on her multiplier. Uh, however, Valkyrie's base defense is quite a bit higher too. So take that in consideration. Uh, this is their tank build masteries. I'm going to go ahead and build her pretty similar to this, honestly. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. They recommend Polymorph in the arena, which does make sense. We don't want uh, someone to strip her buffs, and we do need accuracy on her anyway, so I actually like Polymorph for the arena. Uh, and then Cruelty Clan Boss Late Game Brimstone. I agree with all of those choices. Fortitude, Speed, Perception, Immortal, Frenzy, Swift, Parry, Speed, and Guardian set recommendations uh, for PvP. I, gotta, I can't lie to you guys. I am not a big fan of Swift Parry. I don't think it's a trash set. The stat bonuses alone are pretty solid, but I think it was just absolutely power crept in a big, big way by Stone Skin and in even to a lesser extent, stat wise by Protection Gear. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, recommended PvP. They go HP, Speed, Defense, Crit Rate. Uh, again, for PvP personally, I'm really not building her as a nuker. She, she can hit like. All right, but not super, super hard. I'd rather build her as an uber tank personally. Uh, but it comes down to your own personal preference. Don't be afraid to go. If you are going to build her with some crit rate or whatever, go crit damage on the amulet. And don't be afraid to go accuracy on the banner if you need it. Or if you're, you know, early game and just progressing with her. It is important to get the val full value that she brings to the table. And that includes those, those super valuable debuffs on the A1 and the A2. Uh, so... For all those reasons, let's go support and let's go defense. Now, I already mentioned, and we'll, we'll circle back, on offense, I would just go crit rate, crit damage, and hug the left-hand side all the way down to kill streak, and then I would go giant slayer, provided that we can, you know, we can plan out that there's going to be three debuffs on whoever that we're attack attacking. In those cases, I think that's the way to build her, kind of min-max her for clan boss specifically, or for bosses in general. But I think a good general tanky build is to focus on defense and then support. So support, we're going to get a little bit extra accuracy. Again, it's very important to get enough there. We're going to go with... Yeah, we're going to go Evil Eye, and I definitely want to come down and pick up Master Hexer to extend the duration of the decreased attack. And we're just going to leave it right there for now. On the defensive side of things, I'm going to go with Tough Skin, get more defense. I'm going to come down with Blast, Fruit, Blast Proof, mitigate some AoE damage. We're going to go Resurgent to cleanse away some debuffs. We're going to go Delay Death. We're going to come down to uh, Selfless Defender. This is going to decrease the damage allies receive from the first hit in each round by 20%. This champion will receive that damage instead. Now, it's going to be unlikely that she's going to have her block damage up at that point, but she's still freaking tanky, you know? So she can take the selfless defender hit pretty easily. And then we're going to build her into the ultimate tank, or close to, minus the guardian. And we're going to go with Bulwark. Decrease the damage all allies receive by 5%. This champion will take that damage instead right so now she's just soaking up between the selfless defender between the bulwark she's soaking up so much damage it's great i'm also going to go cycle of revenge to get back to her a3 quicker uh we're gonna go with could go solidarity but i'm gonna go cycle of magic uh, we're going to go with Shadow Heal, get even more heals on her, make sure we're always keeping her alive, and then we're going to go re with Rejuvenation, increase the amount of healing and the value of shields this champion receives by 5%. Eh, it's either that or Exalt and Death, yeah. Eh, I guess... I guess we'll go Muddy Endurance. I guess we'll go Muddy Endurance. So anyway, you guys, those are going to be our, our final masteries here for Kyoku. Uh, in terms of the blessings, we have Lightning Cage on her right now, which I think is, is, is okay. But as I mentioned, especially in the arena, I think I would go now, I think I would go with Polymorph. Uh, outside of the arena in PvE, I think I might go with Brimstone. So, I'm going to go Brimstone. 
you know what? Might as well place the smite. She's going to have some accuracy anyway. Get a little bit of damage out of her since we have her in a tank build anyway. Uh, so there it is, guys. Total stats after mastery is 97k, 3800, 217 on the speed as well. Hey, we're able to get her up to 70% crit rate, so maybe a tiny bit of damage on top of all of that. So guys, let's start out floor 110, Celestial Griffin. We have a Kyoku team with Newt. We have Tagore on there for Reviver. We have Lady Mikage. We have Nagoryu. Uh, it's really just kind of thrown together here the nice thing is is she's able to keep a team alive well as we've spoken about better than most other champions in the game right so what don't we have on this team well we don't have increased uh defense on the squad right we don't really have much in the way of, of heals so to speak uh, well, we have a little bit. Tagore has some heals on him. Uh, but really, she's going to be the main protector when we get to the actual Griffin. So I'll come back to you guys when we get to the Celestial Griffin. These waves are not that interesting. But, do you see what just happened there? She got hit with a critical hit in a wave. She did get stunned, so having higher resist, Righteous Gear maybe, would be a good way to go. Uh, but everybody has increased defense, you know? So as I said, we don't have increased defense, but we do on the Wellspring passive. So be right back. Man, that wasn't a long cut there. I should have just stayed with you guys. Uh, so we do have an ally attack option in Lady Makage, who I absolutely love. Uh, and then our main DPS is going to be uh, new tier against the boss. It's just about keeping everybody else alive uh, while we wait for him to get back to his Blessed Bash, essentially, right? Uh, and he does a great job of that. So you can see block damage, ally protection, uh, especially our squish your attack based champions uh lady mikage and no Nag Nag nagriu whatever the hell his name is <laughs> uh who i've done a guide on by the way i think i've done a guide on everybody at this point on this entire team except for kyoku but you can see i mean the griffin is attacking kyoku she's got blocked damage everybody else just lost their ally protect but everybody's nice and healthy at this point uh I see that we also have the, okay, we have a little shield action right now from Tagore, but she should be, yep, she should be right back to it. Uh, another option on her, I would say, when building, is going with Lasting Gifts, right? Lasting Gifts is going to be able to extend the duration of those ally protects as well, so it's a great option there. Uh, but I'm totally happy with the way that we have her built here. I mean, look at how... I mean, this is the final floor, the most difficult you can get of the Griffin, and with her on the squad, we're able to keep everybody nice and well protected, <laughs> you know? Let them do their work. So our guy here, Nooch, should be... Bus Bash should be up right now, right? No, one, one away, it looks like. One away, and he's a negative affinity DPS here. It just goes to show you how good Newt is, right? And I'm not sure if she dropped it, but that Brimstone putting in work there. A little bit of damage against the the uh, the Griffin, right? So again, we get the Horde, but do we really even need it <laughs> at this point? If you're going to run her in Fire Knight, I might consider going with Phantom Touch, it's definitely not the first choice because the extra damage is based on this champion's attack, which is not going to scale well at all. But you do get credit for an extra hit. And if you're not going to be able to guarantee having three debuffs or whatever on the Fire Knight, which can be tricky with a shield, it might be advantageous. But that would be a very niche situation. I would not advise that in, in you know most of the time. So, she puts out a whopping 64,000 damage there. Uh, Newt 1.4, Lady Mikage 800. Tagore bringing uh, half a mil, not too bad. And Naguro, Naguro. Why do I struggle, man? I don't get it. It's right there. Nagorio. Not that hard. Nagorio uh, comes in with a cool one milli. Man, he is a nuker, dude. He is a nuker. Nagorio and Dirindil are in Flyja are my three most underrated epic nukers in the game. I should probably make a video just talking about them. Anyway, we get a legendary skill tome. Sign me up. Fantastic stuff there. Lady Mikage, by the way, can be subbed out with any ally attacker, really anybody. I just finally fused her, and I just I really love her. Uh, so I'm just trying to play her wherever I can. But I want to say she's an essential type champion there. Hey, uh, I'm going to do a quick arena battle or two here. I always try to highlight everybody in PvP and in PvE on the channel. Uh, but there's a secret room here, too. So... Speaking of the devil, we get Flyja on this squad as well. And you guys can kind of get a, a more of a robust picture of what she's bringing to your squad, right? She's going to come in here, 
protect everybody. Look at all these squishy champions. We have a few of them on the team, right? Miss Rider, Dothy. Like everybody except for Elva is super squishy on this squad. They're all built to just min max, min max their attack and their damage output, right? Speaking of which, let's see Flyja in action. One of them is going to have a big AOE coming up in a second here, I think, unless I missed it. But again, a critical hit came in. What do we get? Increased defense on everybody. Isn't that beautiful? I don't think I have to show you this entire wave, I guess, or the entire uh, three rounds because it's a bit redundant. But I think you guys get the value, right? We've seen the increased defense quite a bit. Uh, it's really dependable, you know? Look at that A1, man. Those extra hits. <laughs> that was actually pretty gnarly, dude. She came in with a... See how hard one Samar Gem Curse hit uh, hurt when we didn't have the ally protection up? Uh, but now we're, we're, we're beautiful, right? Uh, as we're resisting right there, I do want to reiterate one more time for you guys. That I think that Righteous Gear is a nice idea on this champion because we really don't want to get her CC'd at all, right? So building a little bit of resist in her kit, uh, I feel like you guys would not regret. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on from here. But you guys can, you know, just another... Uh, indicator of just how much value she brings when it comes to keeping your team alive and that can apply not just to a secret room but any doom tower wave uh as you're making your way up the doom tower and the uh, the going gets rough let's go ahead and go into the arena really quickly here i have not played arena today so uh you know we're falling behind a little bit i need to push up a little bit here but uh what type of team will we put her on well the answer is many type of team <laughs> in case you missed yesterday's video guys I absolutely have to show you this combo. Man, oh man, oh man. I cannot get enough of it. Valkanen and Nogdar the Hud Hunter, or Valkanen and Sun Wukong. It works similarly, but Nogdar is even better. Uh, but I'm going to put her on this team because she can fit in, in almost any team. Look at this. We sacrifice with the A3 of Valkanen, and then Nogdar just comes right back to life with a full turn meter. Isn't that cool? Uh, so now, and we put true fear on everybody, but it's not about, it's not about Valken, not about Nodar, it's about Kyoku Ash. So look at this, guys. Now they do have a buff remover on the team and Prince Kaimar and Michinaki. So this is like the worst team to go against, but it's still pretty dang effective. She goes in there with the, uh... Uh, with the A2, we land we, we land the decrease attack on everybody, and now we can basically pick who we want to kill here. Uh, Valkanen can basically one-shot anybody with this A3. It's really insane, and it's a block revive ability as well. Uh, anyway, let's do this. Let's come in here, and I mean, the rest of the team just does what they do, right? They do all their stuff. They revive. They turn meter boost they do whatever and kayoku just keeps everybody alive and she's so annoying because she has blocked damage she's not taking any real damage uh let's go against this team hopefully they're faster than me because i really want to illustrate how even on a go first team she can be kind of like a uh worst case scenario type champion meaning that if you don't win the speed race then what happens usually you die but not with Kyoku, because she comes uh, acts as a seeker, right? She, the same way that he acts. She comes in here, and she she mitigates that damage, the increased defense, and the heal, right? Uh, okay, let's go again with the ally protect. Block damage on herself. She comes in there with the A2 ability, and it's still a two turns of block damage, two turns of increased defense, just like we spoke about. Two turns of ally protect on everybody. Who do you want one shot? We only have one option. UDK, you're dead, man. You're dead. All right, let's do this. We should have done Wither, but it's okay. We can get rid of their Reviver. And now it's, again, nothing can happen here, right? I almost went to cancel the battle. I'm like, okay, we showed this one. But you guys can already get the picture, even though it didn't work out exactly as we planned. I wanted somebody to beat me speed-wise. Uh, but you can also play her on a go second team. So let's try that out. Let's go against like a... Actually, let's try one more against one more go first team. And uh, of course, we go first again, dude. Man, man. Okay, let's come in. Let's do this. It's nice too to have, and you can already see this value. And like, this is why I love going into the arena because you just get to see this like up close and personal, all the, the value actually viewing it and soaking it all in. And one thing that I want to point out to you guys is what we're seeing 
with the back-to-back -back turns. Like granting an extra turn allows us in one turn of Kaioku to get block damage, to get ally protect on everybody, to get a decrease attack on all enemies, all in basically one turn or two turns combined to one because of that extra, right? So again, boom and boom. And look at that, we land a burn. What do you know, we land a burn. All right, let's go after their uh, baby booty. Yeah, let's go after Duchess here. And then I really don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be messing with Mortu Macabre anymore there. We're getting, we're getting dangerous. We're in peril. See what I did there? We're in peril. All right, this uh, block revive, uh, oh, sorry, unkillable. So we can ignore unkillable with this ability, which is nice. So we could take uh we could take out uh Leo and block his revive, but I'm more scared of Mortu Macabre. So I'm gonna kill him instead. Boom. 177k with block revive. That's Valkanen for you. All right, so we lose Nogdar. It's okay, it comes back to life full turn meter. We can burn the revive because we don't need it. And again, here. This is kind of a funny team because we don't even really need uh we don't even really I don't know. This is just broken. We don't even need Kyoku here because of all the synergy that we have uh, with these three champions, or these two champions specifically. So let's change up the squad and make it go second team here. Uh, we'll just do like a quick little run and just kind of throw whoever in there, but come on, Duchess. Oh, golly. Oh, golly. You got to do this. You got to do this to us, Duchess. Uh, let's go again. We don't care, Leo. You can't do anything to us, man. Because we got the ally protect. We got the ally protect, and now you're dead. It, there are a couple revivers on the team, but we're going to go ahead and really give her next to no HP left. Don't you dare, Pytheon. You're dead. There we go. There we go. All right, so what would a go second team look like with Kyoku? Well, one of my favorite combinations. I want to go against the go first team because it would make sense. Uh, let's go. Yeah, that team looks kind of weak. Okay, this team's good, and they have a block revive too on the team, so it's a, a good, a good use case here. Let's go with this squad, but let's kind of rebuild it here. Obviously, let's put her on in the lead. Let's put a. Uh, I wish you could search for champions on the collection screen. Hopefully, I have Vogoth built, but Vogoth has that really cool passive too, right? Where we can go in and we can uh, we can get that nice heal. So where is he? Right in front of my my eyes. Vogoth, Vogoth, where are you, buddy? Come on, okay, there you are, there you are. So who's gonna be our real nuker here? We have Goffrey, but he's not gonna be our nuker. Uh, he's not built to be a nuker, really. He's kind of a semi. Let's run a, you know, let's go for the big guns. Who cares, right? Let's go with my favorite. If we're gonna run a defensive nuker team, let's run a real defensive nuker team and run a Harima in there, okay? So this is a great go second team, but really any defense-based nuker would suffice. Uh, I would consider, and we're going against a Foley, so we have to be super careful, and we have decreased defense, but guess what? We have now increased uh, uh, defense with a passive. We have a lot of debuffs in, you know, the Foley barely touched us, I felt like there, right? Uh, let's go in with a stun. Foley, cute Foley, cute buddy. But you saw that? The combo of her and Vogoth on the same squad, super formidable guys, right? We were able to heal double heal with passives, increase defense with passives, and then we come in here and, and block damage. They already use their their decrease or their their strip the uh, strip abilities, excuse me, and we're looking beautiful here. So, guys, that's Kyoku. She's a beast, man. Hopefully this video proved that to you guys and it helped you guys out. There's so many different ways to play around with this champion, to build this champion. Hopefully again inspired a little bit of creativity and you guys can walk away happy Kyoku utilizers and owners. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. And as always, take care, guys.